Hagoromo and his two sons, Indra and Ashra, are arguably the most misunderstood characters in the entire series in regards to strength. From how I understand it, the anime has a large part in this misconception masking Indra and Ashra's true character as just Naruto and Sasuke clones, with Sasuke's Mangekyo pattern in Indra and Ashra using a Rasengan variant. Now, while they may be similar in the manga, it's much different, and they're only in it for like three chapters, so, you know, that's like at most. However, those three chapters are packed full, so today I want to go through many arguments that I've created and found to kind of find the best conclusion to where these three characters actually scale and just to kind of get around that misconception. Um, before we start though, I do want to say if I sound sick, um, I'm sorry, it's because I am. Sorry for recording when I'm sick, um, I know I did that with Nieto vs Toby Rama, which you should check out, but anyway, whatever, let's jump into it. Firstly, I want to say that Alive Hagoromo and Post-Death Hagoromo are quite different in power, so whenever I say that Indra and Ashra is scale above or below or around Hagoromo, I'm talking about Alive Hagoromo, not Post-Death Hagoromo. So, the first thing to establish with Indra and Ashra is who they are and how are they actually created. Yeah, that's right, I said it, created. Hagoromo, upon his introduction, states that, quote, I am he who shall bring peace and order, with his symbol of peace and order being his ninju circle sitting right next to it, and yes, this is a symbol, not a Rene Sharingan, and he has this on his forehead, so please don't say that's an eyeball. I don't get why people always say that. With that being said, when Hagoromo reaccounts his history to Naruto, he affirms that Kaguya birthed two children with a human, and obviously they are, uh, you know, they came out quite different and far more Otsutsuki like rather than human like, which is consistent as Hamura, Hagoromo's brother, having descendants who are still extremely Otsutsuki like and possess barely any humanoid features at all. However, when Hagoromo talks about Indra and Ashura, he doesn't refer to birth and just says that he had two children. Which, when pairing this with the fact that they are extremely human-like, Hagromo probably just created them rather than having sex and being birthed with them. This does make sense as well if you consider what I said about Hagoromo's character as well and wanting everything to be balanced. One child inherited power and the other inherited will. However, Black Setsu would interfere in all of this, disrupting the order and forcing utter chaos for the next 2,000 years. Therefore, the chakra that Hagoromo gave to Indra and Ashura was actually his own chakra split into two different parts, not their unique chakra coming from their own DNA. I'll come back to this in a bit and why that's important. Hagoromo would go on to you know, nurture both children, teaching them his, you know, beloved ninshu, a not quite ninjutsu, but something quite different, which Indra excelled at, and Ashra, not so much, with Hagoromo stating that the difference between the two in talent was absolute most extreme, even implying that Indra may not even have a limit on what kind of talent he could have grown to. Indra, being fully aware of this, set out to be alone. He truly wanted to be alone, not like Sasuke or even Madara. He's also not yet implied to have gone mad like both Sasuke and Madara did. However, with him likely being on the level of Hagoromo, or even above at this point as the data book states, probably gave him the impression that he no longer needed his father or brother, with that he wasn't like Ashra who strived for peace through camaraderie and bonds. Then, noticing this, Hagoromo gave Ashra all of his remaining power following him splitting the nine beasts, which is another thing I'll come back to in how Hagoromo can actually exist currently. So now Ashra, who has gotten stronger and formed bonds, gains all of Hagoromo's power, meaning that he should be directly above Hagoromo, or at least Hagoromo after he split the Jubi, that is. With this being said, Indra and Ashra still rivaled each other in power, having their own final valley fight, if you want to call it that, with Indra awakening the Mangeku at Hagoromo's decision, probably being one key factor as why he was actually able to keep up with Ashra even after Ashra got all of Hagoromo's power. Then they battle it, and we get this perspective shot showing two very interesting ideas. First being that Ashra possessed some pseudo six path sage mode, displaying two heads and five true seeking orbs, and secondly, Indra Susano may be possibly just gigantic. Beginning with the first one, Ashura is never listed as a user of Six Pass Sage Mode in the 4 data book, yet he has the Kurama Avatar and True Seeking Orbs, which are traits that directly make up Six Pass Sage Mode. However, he may not even be a Six Pass Sage Mode user, since you'll also notice that Ashura resides in the pseudo Kurama's stomach as Naruto resides in Kurama's head. The reason I say pseudo Kurama is because Kurama never actually makes note of Ashura, yet does a, a lot about Hagoromo, actually, uh, rather frequently. So, if they did truly do 
do this together and have such a connection i feel that he would have mentioned it somewhere but i digress you can interpret this as a six pass sage mode that ashra possesses or just say that the data book is mistaken similarly to how it doesn't list hashirama as a yin user yet we see him do that right in front of our very eyes if you do take this route then you could say that this is actually more impressive for both of them particularly indra and they are keeping up with each other after ashra uses six pass sage mode after getting Hagoromo's power meaning it's all amped up which one thing many people bring up in regards to Naruto and Sasuke is that Hagoromo gave them half of his power which I don't even have any problems with but by the way that's never stated but when people try to say that Hagoromo is as strong as both Kaguya fight Naruto and Sasuke because of this I do have a problem then reason being is that yes he could have given them half of his chakra which is another misconception again but we'll run with it he also gave them ways to amplify that six pass chakra such as in naruto's case he actually gave him the ability to amplify the chakra with sage mode creating six pass sage mode meaning that if it's a 10 times amp from jirobo's statement about the curse mark then naruto is likely around five times stronger than a p kagoromo and then sasuke was later able to keep up with him after they both get stronger with his renegon that hagoromo gave to him as well which might not even be true either as we know that the reason that madara got the renegon was taking a lot of senju chakra or ashura chakra whatever and then getting a near-death experience so this also happened to sasuke hashirama gave him the rest of his chakra in edo then sasuke almost died so that Renegon has six pass properties since it's shown in the Obito versus Conan fight and again a talk about peace and order in regards to Hagoromo. So Hagoromo could have just given Sasuke amps and buffs to add to his Renegon that he just got. With all that being said, this means that if you grant Ashura having a six pass sage mode like Naruto, then they are both fighting each other at a power several times greater than alive Hagoromo who once battled and sealed Kaguya alongside Hamura. Now with this, this also isn't really a feat for Hagoromo or Hamura as this Kaguya sort of sucks. What I mean is, it's like this. So, one eyed initial Jubi absorbed Madara is close to Hagoromo in power and is under Kaguya. Then he absorbs the God Tree, which is literally a complete Ten Tails, according to Amato, meaning that he's literally doubled in power, at least. Then, after that, he takes in Chakra from those who are trapped in the infinite Tsukiyome, and that Chakra is even stronger than the Ten Tails, as stated by Naruto, making him three times greater than Hagoromo by this point. Then, Kaguya emerges, in which she is still suppressed, trying not to. To harm the wasteland around her in which sasuke notes that her chakra far exceeds madara and even has a hard time grasping her existence based on this which is kind of true considering that her chakra was literally going to explode madara's body just due to how much there was compared to madara's body a madara who is already three times stronger than hagoromo who fought kaguya which this also is counting how madara took chakra from naruto and sasuke and a few other things but whatever we also have to establish that kaguya with just her one jubi level amp meaning under madara level is above or around the level of hagoromo and hamura combined so sorry if that felt tangential but just need to get this idea out of the way so, you know, pretty much Hagoromo scales to Kaguya, but not the one that scales to Naruto and Sasuke in the work. Anyway, again, sorry if that felt tangential, just need the idea to be gone. So, Indra and Ashura are far above Hagoromo by maybe five times being generous to them, which I can get into and why that's consistent, since we are made fully aware that Hagoromo, when talking to Naruto, states in relation to Madara, quote, now, no longer Indra's reincarnate, he's obtained Ten Tails power, and is getting even close to me, and is even trying to attain even my mother's power, end quote. This establishes many ideas, firstly, between the uh, hyper-consistency of my previous this argument that Kage is likely three to four times stronger than Hagoromo and will go on to grow exponentially from there. It also corresponds with Madara gaining all those amps and saying that he's still trying to get power to even obtain Kage's level. This scan also potentially implies something else, being that Hagoromo is above Indra. Well, there are a few interpretations to this. Firstly, being that yes, Hagoromo is above Indra in the generous line of scaling I mentioned earlier if you take Ashura's avatar as legit, which is fine. Another interpretation is that Hagoromo now, after becoming a ghost, I guess, is just much stronger and he's talking about ghost Hagoromo not alive Hagoromo or lastly the interpretation is that Hagoromo is stating that Madara's chakra is no longer resembling Indra's qualities but with all the new amps he's gotten such as Hashirama's sage mode the renegon the ten tails and how much closer he's now resembling Hagoromo's chakra not Indra's chakra either one is fine 
However, it being more power related is certainly more consistent, which does really matter because Madara goes on to get several amps and then a suppressed Kaguya is above that who also can get even crazier amps and Naruto and Sasuke would go on to combat that Kaguya on a very relative footing, which is consistent as even if you don't agree with the Ashra 6 past Sage Mode argument, it still very much applies to Naruto as Naruto gets Hagoromo's power and blitzes both Guy and Madara in his base 6 past state, then is able to actually amplify this state far beyond that with a Sage Mode, a potential 10 times increase in power, hence to why Naruto can then fight very equally and react to Kaguya, who is far above Hagoromo and Madara, alive Hagoromo that is. With that being said, I have heard an argument from an old content creator named Spencer who doesn't really post anymore but has very educated opinions on Hagoromo and I think he gave a pretty good argument if you were to apply numerical values to these characters, which I'm going to kind of run with and extend upon it here. Let's say that a 10 tails amp is 10, the Kaguya that fought Hagoromo is 10, therefore Hagoromo gaining that is also a 10, then once absorbing the god tree at his peak alive power, he would then be a 20. Madara becomes one with the Tintails and is now a 10, ignoring his other amps. He absorbs the God Tree, making him a 20, so he's now equal to a peak Hagoromo. Then it keeps going. Naruto states that the chakra he gained from the Shinobi is even greater than the God Tree, to which he then absorbs, making him now a 30. And then Kaguya, who while suppressing herself, now has so much chakra to make that Madara explode, who has a value of 30, and then gets amps and amps, in which one even states that she's now exponentially greater, which definitionally just means involving an exponent, I mean that Kage and the war arc that Naruto and Sasuke Kakashi could do battle with is a 900. Yeah, taking Zetsu's account literally though, that is. So even if you want to say that maybe Zetsu is being hyperbolic, and it's actually just another god tree level amp being generous, meaning that Kaguya is now a 40, and peak alive Hagoromo is a 20, or if you really want to just really downplay Kaguya, you say she's just unquantifiably above that Madara while suppressed, and you can't actually quantify that she gets any stronger, and just say that she's a 30, which is still above peak alive Hagoromo, who is still at a 20 based on these Jubi amps. However, Another opponent some people think Hagoromo could be is Momoshiki Otsutsuki, who, if again taking these numerical god tree route, has one planet with 16 god trees bare minimum, making him 160 and Hagoromo is a 20. So, please, before we move you know, to, to even more complicated territory, just stop saying that a live Hagoromo is above six past Naruto, Sasuke, you know, three eyed Madara, and Kage is. That's pretty dishonest. You know, he is still very powerful, don't get me wrong, like eight gates guy level, but please. Please, there are levels to this. Yo, 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 sorry to interrupt, but I, I just want to say if you guys are enjoying this video or if you have learned something, please consider hitting that subscribe button as it would be greatly appreciated. Or maybe just check out some more of my content as there is a lot of hard work that goes into this. I mean, these guys literally have like three chapters at most, so please. Anyway, back to the video. Now, to discuss and answer how Indra, Ashra, and more importantly, Hog Romo can currently exist, and then get into how powerful Ghost Hog Romo truly is, for Indra and Ashra and how they could actually reincarnate so many times, as Hog Romo implies in this page, over 15 different times displaying Tori Gates and the art, seemingly no reason except for Hog Romo stating that they just reincarnated over and over, with a Tori Gate in Japanese culture representing a sacred entrance to something new or important. However, if I had to give an answer as to why they could, it's just honestly chakra this will make more sense when we talk about hog romo but essentially chakra isn't just you know some one for one type of energy and you know you know that's, that's all it is it, it matters it matters a little more than that you know ch chakra is an energy with and everyone molded by not only their genetics but also their very own spiritual prowess mental energies their physical prowess as well many things go into chakra there's so many different properties you know chakra just has different properties innately and i'll just throw a bunch of examples for that up on screen so maybe you could say that indra and ashra's chakra you know is just so very potent and left an impact on characters making them very similar to those that they once were carrying on their will but past that there isn't really any answer other than maybe Maybe just some deep concept rather than anything else that needs to be conveyed through characters that Kishimoto wanted to put out. However, for Hog Romo and how he exists is complex, but not as complex as you may believe. Pretty early into his lore, it's established that Hog Romo possessed the Ten Tails for many, many years, nearly his entire life. So what's this mean? Well, yes, Hagoromo also gained the Ten Tails power, but what if I said it's also implied that the Ten Tails gained Hagoromo's power as well, literally fusing with his genetic makeup? 
Let me explain. In the latter half of Data Book 3, there's a Q&A section, and essentially someone asked Kishimoto, quote, since Gara lost Shukaku, and, you know, why would he still be able to use Shukaku's sand? And Kishimoto responded to that via stating, quote, once it's ingrained in you, you can't take anything away, not even sand. Meaning that due to holding on to Shukaku for roughly 16 years, his pure genetic makeup was fused with Shukaku to the point that once Shukaku was removed, those codons were still ingrained, with Gara knowing how to utilize a power-based ability typically exclusive to Shukaku. We know this is consistent with the tailed bees altering the normal makeup of a human, such as when Killer Bee Lariat Sasuke, and you can actually see that in his V2, his right hand's thumbnail gets significantly longer, like a claw of sorts. Meaning that due to Gyuki being in him, there was a response of vitamin B7 and biotin and whatever else to instantly lengthen the thumbnail like that. Even though Killer B, no, you know, neither. Even though neither Killer B nor Gyuki possess claws like that, or even in the anime, Killer B also has fangs, so the genetics must be from somewhere else, being Kurama and maybe Matatabi. This is where stuff gets kind of interesting. So essentially, I'm just going to establish now that every tailed beast are the same thing and all possess portions of each other, such as the last instance. This is just due to how long they were actually fused together in the ten tails, so their DNA kind of is mixed together, which is fine as they are all just sections of one entity, and their qualitative traits are more acquired through their lifetime. Anyway, back to Hagorobo. We know that Hagoromo was actually a Tintails Jinchuriki for so long that the Tintails Jinchuriki gained Hagoromo's power. Why do I say this? Well, when Naruto gains better mastery of Kurama, the largest portion of the Tintails, he gets KCM1, KCM1.5, and KCM2, which all have Hagoromo's markings on his back and the order symbol on the nine comma symbols representing the nine bijou lined across his back. Miyato also gets this when he gets KCM2, meaning that this isn't an Ashra exclusive ability. Jubito and Jubidara also have these symbols, these symbols, you know, of Hagoromo that he actually wore after gaining the Tintos, which is why they are actually ingrained in Hagoromo's power and genetics as well, because once you gain enough of Hagoromo's genetics, you get true seeking orbs, such as when Naruto got it gifted. One thing I said I'd come back to is why Sasuke didn't get them, and it's simply because he didn't have the Nine Tails stacked on top of that. That's why Naruto gets them, and he goes into Six Pass Sage mode with the glow, or more importantly, when Obito gets the Tintails, same with Madara. This is why statements such as Obito claiming he has Hagoromo's power is because he literally does have have it. Not because he's similar, but because it's actually deep in there. That's why Hagoromo was incapacitated for like six months due to half his genetics being destroyed when compared to Obito, yet he just had to fuse it and he recovered in merely a few hours at most. This is the reason also as to why Hagoromo can still interact with Earth. His chakra is still there and a shitload of it. The entire Hagoromo clan, Senju clan, Uzumaki descendants, Tsuchiya clan, every tailed beast, and potentially the Indra and Ashra chakra that I mentioned earlier, and all of that is literally ingrained in his DNA, which is all still tied to Earth from the Pure Lands. This is why Hagoromo passes through time at the same rate of Earth's evolution. We know it's the same rate because every time Hagoromo mentions his time passing, he seems unaware of Ishiki or Kaguya's personality or the future of him and being unsure of even the outcome of Naruto and Sasuke's bout or their bout with Kaguya as conceded by himself. He also states that he never saw the events ending up like this or how the war turned out. Moreover, Hagoromo is moving through, you know, you know, through time just at a, at a linear rate similar to Earth since he knows certain things. There are just some things he doesn't know, like basic ninjutsu. He can't even summon without hand signs. He also didn't know Naruto's language. He got that wrong as well. Pretty weird if you, you know, think he was crossing exponentially through time wherever he wanted as a god or something. Kind of weird, right? Anyway, I digress back to why he can, you know, be on Earth. Whenever he was summoned by Hashirama, it was literally because enough of his chakra was there in one spot for him to actually gather there as well. Hashirama, who possessing Ashura Senju Chakra, touched Jubidara, a being possessing ten tails, Indra, Uchiha, you know, Chakra, and with those being combined, it's pretty much nearly all of Hagoromo's chakra qualities, forcing Hagoromo to literally appear there. When Hashirama lets go, he then has a very finite amount of time as to why he can't stay there for very long and admits he's going to fade away, and that's just because his chakra is still there it's just not connected anymore, so he's literally fading back to the Pure Lands. 
you want more supplementary, you know, material to prove this correct, the reason Kinkaku and Ginkaku didn't die from eating Kurama's innards is straight up because they are more closely related to Hagoromo and already have the Ninetales chakra within them, potentially acting as antibodies, which is certainly explains again why they didn't get poisoned. However, Sakura gets poisoned from a slash of the Four Tails hide, as Sakura is not even any notable clan relative to Hagoromo, therefore possessing nothing to act as an antibody like Kinkaku and Ginkaku had. On the topic of the Gold and Silver Brothers, you can also use them to justify why Hagoromo created Indra and Ashura rather than conceived them with a woman, is because Kinkaku and Ginkaku, two descendants of Hagoromo dating thousands of years, still have very Otsutsuki-like traits shared with Hagoromo, such as their horns, which Indra and Ashura just don't possess at all and look very human-like. If anything, Hagoromo probably created Indra and Ashura and then that fell apart and since Ninshu failed, Hagoromo had kids with a human female and later had the Hagoromo clan spoken of during Hashirama's time, which Kinkaku and Genkaku could have been born from, which he just never actually taught them Ninshu due to it failing. So to answer the age-old question of if Hagoromo is really a god or just a spirit, and if the latter, how does he exist? Well, simply, chakra and genetics. With that being said, if Ghost Hagoromo isn't some omnipresent god, how strong is he really? And, well, simply, this could be left up to interpretation. The Sage of Six Paths is said to possess every jutsu, in which I wouldn't take this statement literally, considering it's merely a rumor from 2,000 years following his death. However, with him possessing the Mangekyo Sharingan, as highlighted more in the anime, if Hagoromo could see the hand signs, he should be able to copy a jutsu either way, as he is a master of the all five nature transformations, yin, yang, summoning, and senjutsu, according to the fourth data book. However, the most troubling aspect of this Hagoromo is not his fireball or water style, but his actual potential infinite use of Izanagi and Izanami via his legendary creation of all things Jutsu. Which is much simpler than what people realize, Sakura's 100 healings Jutsu could be implied to be a variant of creation of all things in Boruto, regardless, it is still very, um, you know, it's still a very deadly ability to go up against for your, you know, opponent just to just to infinitely revive himself until you are defeated. Unless your opponent had an Izanami, it's just basically a win. Presuming the stats are relative, of course, so don't put him against Ishiki. You also have to think about why Hog Romo can come to Earth in the first place, because his chakra is still there. So he could also just use that to his advantage and just keep coming back if they happen to be in a similar place or a close place, you know, all in all. Uh, but anyway, Hagoromo, the Sage of Six Paths, and his two sons, Indra and Ashura, are arguably some of the, uh, you know, three most misunderstood characters in the entire franchise. Especially when having a conversation with the typical anime watcher who consumed an entire sub arc about them that just didn't even happen. I could certainly see where things got muddied. However, I do truly hope that you learned something from this video, and if you did, please leave a like on this video or even consider subscribing as that would be greatly appreciated. Last but not least, if you'd like to see me, uh, you know, send out an Indra or Ashura or Hagoromo versus match, let's go for 300 comments and I'll do it, or maybe I'll even do the top suggestion for it. But for this video, please let me know what you guys think about. Hagoromo, maybe you take Kurama's statement as power applicable in regards to Sasuke. Anyway, until next time, love you guys.